So welcome back to another episode of Steve Talks About Night Vision Stuff. Um, on this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about this guy, the iRay CE5. What it is, what it isn't, what it can do for you, different configurations, controls, menus, uh, features, etc. So let's get into it. So what is the CE5? The CE5 is an objective side clip-on thermal imager. So what does that mean exactly? Uh, essentially what this is, is it attaches directly to the front of the, or the objective side of your traditional analog uh, night vision device. It gathers all the thermal signatures, processes the image, and then projects that image through this tiny pinhole camera onto the objective side of your night vision device. So when you look through your night vision, you'll not only see your regular um, you know, image intensified uh, image, but also all of the heat signatures that this has gathered um, kind of overlaid on top. This is full thermal. This is highlight mode. Notice how everything is just one tone and it just highlights the hottest parts of the image. And then this is outline mode. Now the C5 projects about it basically occupies about 30 degrees field of view um, inside of this device. Uh, we have the CE2 as well, that projects about 17 degrees. So different fields of view, depending on how much uh, of your um, you know, night vision image you want the thermal to sort of occupy in terms of an overlay. Uh, the body is essentially made out of aluminum, the main body. So basically everything from uh, this area and down is made out of aluminum. Um, and then the only thing that's plastic really is the back housing, as well as this gooseneck where the um, image is actually gonna be projected. We're gonna be releasing our line of, um, you know, basically Jerry C or CE5 protectors, which essentially covers the entire frontal area, uh, including this body, uh, protects the neck, and then also extends further down to even um, cover up this knob here. So it actually makes it, you know, a bit more guarded. So going back to how it attaches, um, the CE5 actually comes with this little bracket here. So it's pretty simple. Um, what you would do is you would basically loosen or tighten by turning this little uh, lever. And you basically slide this onto your device and then basically clip on. That's basically it. So the bracket can actually stay on your night vision device and then the CE5 can just slide on and off as you need it. So what you probably want to do is figure out what orientation you're going to use the um, your night vision device in and basically set up your CE5 in a way that it's in a sort of a 90 degree increments. Uh, the reason for that, and again, I don't know how big of a deal this is, but basically what you can do with, with this inside the menu is turn the menu system and you know the display and the text, etc. that's being shown to you in 90 degree increments. Um, does it really matter? Um, you know, to the image, to the thermal image without the text. No, it actually has no difference. It just depends whether or not that bothers you. Um, so for example, if you have this set up over your left eye, uh, usually kind of kicked over here with your JM this way, uh, you can set it up sort of on the left, or sorry, on the right rather. Um, and if you also, if, if you kind of using your PVS-14 over on your right hand side, you could also rotate this and set it up so that it's a bit more vertical. And again, it depends, you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit. But basically, uh, this clamping mechanism allows you to sort of rotate this as much as you need to get this um, thermal imager set up the, basically the right way for you. Again, it's all very user preferential, so you just, you know, like I said, play around with that. So essentially, you only have two controls here. Um, one is a multifunction dial and another is a button on the back. Um, this knob, this multifunction dial, essentially controls the power. So if you sweep it and you hear it click, that means the unit is on. And normally what this does is it just basically adjusts the brightness of the image you're looking at. Uh, when you press down on this button, it changes between the three different display modes, which is full thermal, highlight, and outline mode. Uh, from our experience, I just found that highlight mode seems to work the best. Um, but again, you know, everyone's a little bit different. So feel free to play around with it. Um, and then what you can do also is press this button, you press this button on the back, it enables pulse mode or breathing mode. And what this does is pulses the image, thermal image, um, turns it on and off, 
And then from there, when you're in pulse mode, you can actually control the frequency of the pulsing via this dial here. Uh, why the pulse mode is useful is if you're dealing in, you know, highlight situations or sort of a bright light situation. Um, you can actually, you know, mistake a thermal signature for a heat, of course not for a heat source, for a light source. Just by virtue of how the system works, essentially what it does is it gathers thermal signatures and it projects uh, the thermal um, image as light, essentially, onto this lens. So by using the breathing mode, you can actually see what the image looks like with and without the thermal. So you can determine whether or not whatever you're looking at is, is either a heat source or just like a, like a light or like some sort of a, like a light source. Um, and then going on to the actual button again, if you hold down the button, you actually enter the menu system. From the menu system, you can control and modify the contrast if you're in uh, full thermal mode. You can modify the threshold if you're in outline mode. You can change the rotation of the menu system. So for example, if um, you, know, you put the device on and it's like this and the menu is rotated 90 degrees, you can just change it so it's right side up. Uh, and that's, that's uh, modifiable in 90 degree increments. If you're in outline mode, what you can do is go to where it says TA, this is threshold, and then you can change how much or how much outline is applied. And likewise, if you're in full thermal mode, you can actually set the contrast. So I'm gonna actually dial this down to show you guys what I mean. So contrast is set to one right now. So as you can see, it basically makes the hot parts of the image brighter. Uh, contrast is set only in full thermal and threshold is only set in outline mode. So there are some old reviews kicking around um, the internet that basically said the settings are not kept in the device. Um, that's no longer the case. Uh, so things like contrast, threshold, rotation, etc. Once you set those in the menu system, they are kept and maintained in on the device itself, even when you pull the battery, so even when you pull the battery or, or you know disconnect power. Um, the other thing I want to touch on was the thermal offset. So um, in one of the you know, older complaints about this particular device was, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't change the offset, so to speak. Um, that's obviously, again, no longer the case. Um, as you can see, you know, if you have the devices together, they are on two separate planes, right? So you are going to get a bit of an offset difference between what you're seeing in your traditional analog night vision versus your thermal. Um, these are calibrated from the factory for the right offset. Now, it's kind of like zeroing rifle sights, right? So. What works for one range for a specific range might not necessarily work for another. So you will, you can play around with this. So to set the calibration, what you're gonna do is hold down the menu button and go over to where it says roll and make sure that it's set to zero. And then you can continue down the menu to where it says exit and then turn the gain up to between 85 to 90%. So we're now at 89 and then hold down the menu button again, and you'll get a four-way uh, directional pad. So from here, you can select the direction you want to offset it to. So you can go up, or you can go left, or you can go down. And then if you feel like you've messed up, you want to go back to starting, just go to reset, and it'll put it back to where it was uh, from the factory. And like I said, these settings are all maintained even if you pull power. So once you set it, you don't really have to touch it again. And that's it. Another thing that I wanted to touch on was this eyepiece adapter. Um, you could buy this separately from us. And what the, this does is it basically turns any Jerry C device or CE5, CE2, whatever, into its own standalone thermal monocular. So basically plugs in and as you can see it basically projects it through this lens into an eyepiece and you could essentially use this during the day if you wanted to, to give you that nice thermal capability um, without needing to have a host device um, kind of a nice accessory to have the i will say though that the eye relief um, is not the best um, what we did is that this actually came with a rubber eyepiece uh, that we removed because it just didn't really work with iPro and things like that. If you move the iPro, uh, sorry, if you move the rubber cover of uh, the rubber eyepiece, it actually works quite well. It's kind of a cool little thing you can throw it in your pocket. 
have this also in your kit and then kind of basically put the two together and have just basically instant daytime thermal capabilities. Again, this is a you know an area where something like full thermal mode on the CE5 would really come in handy uh, over like something like highlight mode when you're using it buddied up with a PVS14 or you know like a traditional night vision device. So the Jerry C family of devices really consists of four different models. Um, CE5, C5, CE2, and C2. So the E in the CE models represent the external battery. Um, so what we found is that when we were using sort of like the older legacy devices like uh, the Pass 29A Cotti, is that with the onboard battery taking CR123, you get maybe like an hour to an hour and a half out of it, and then you guys basically have to swap batteries all the time, which is really annoying. Um, so with the CE5 and the CE2, the entire battery compartment has been removed and it only takes outboard power via a battery pack, a wire, and it basically plugs directly into the back. This essentially achieves two things. Um, gives you eight hours of continuous battery, uh, which essentially lasts the whole night or possibly longer if you're not using it all the time. And um, basically reduces that frontal helmet weight. So, you know, a good way to think about this is, you know, you're hanging like a PVS-14 or a binocular off the front of your head. You're now adding this to the front of that even. So anything that you add, so I guess anything that you remove from that is gonna matter a lot more just because of the distance away from your head. Um, so essentially with the CE models, uh, we're able to make it a lot more ergonomic as well as a lot more functional versus the, the onboard battery options. Now if you wanted to get the onboard battery options, yeah, we can get those, you can order those in for you. Uh, not, a, not a problem at all. Um, just from our functional testing and, and usage, we just found that these, these models make the most sense for us at least. So the difference between the uh, CE5 and the CE2 is really the thermal core. Uh, the CE5 has a 640 core and the CE2 has a 320 core. So functionally what that means is basically, essentially, you know, your, your normal night vision has around 40 degree field of view. Um, and the CE5 basically gives you about 75% coverage um, over that area. So the easiest way to think about this, for those of you who are familiar with night vision, like zones for blemishes, essentially occupies both zones one and two. Um, and then the CE2 gives you about half of that. So basically it gives you about um, 17 degree field of view over 40, so it's a little bit less than half. And essentially another analogy is, is occupies, occupies essentially zone one of your uh, image intensified you know, field of view. Now, does that really matter? Um, yeah, it depends on what you're trying to do. Something you have to keep in mind also is that you're actually, you know, with this system, you're actually already getting like a rap, very rapid uh, detection capability with this. So um, does that mean that with the CE2, you probably have to pan your head left and right a little bit more? Yeah, probably. Um, do you save a thousand dollars? Also, yes. So what I found through using the CE2 is that sometimes it's actually, I prefer it because it actually gives me less thermal, like, or visual noise rather. Um, and what I mean by that is sometimes you don't always want like full thermal as much as possible, um, just because sometimes it gets a little bit distracting. So that's a use case for having the CE2. It's obviously like, you know, a lot more budget friendly, good way to get into the thermal clip-on game, instantly gives you that um, night vision capability, sorry, that thermal capability, still comes with the exact same battery pack, exact same cable, it actually externally looks exactly the same. Which one should I get? Like the Cotti, the CE5, or the full dedicated thermal monocular, which is the MH25? And the answer is it depends. Um, it depends what you want to do, it depends on your goals, etc. If you're looking for something that you can just throw onto your existing night vision device and give you that nice quick thermal overlay, you know, essentially you're not having to tra visually train yourself to use anything like that, uh, CE5, that's the way to go. Um, you know, it has multiple uh, display modes and things like that. Like I said, just super easy to use. So the MH25 is going to be sort of like a PVS-14 uh, buddy, or uh, basically, you know, you basically put it on a pano bridge and you use it side by side. What the MH25 gives you over the CE5 are things like different color palettes, the ability to zoom into parts of the image, um, a much wider field of view, the ability to focus um, on specific thermal signatures. Um, you know, so essentially you have to think about what, what you're trying to achieve and, and, you know, the type of environments you're operating in, like the kind of setup that you want to run, etc. So all of that has to be considered. Um, 
you know, we use both equally depending on the task at hand. I mean, obviously, would it be nice to get both? 100%, but you have to choose the right device that you're going to benefit from most of the time. Okay, so hopefully that wraps it up for, uh, you know, the CE5 kind of went over most of the, if not all the features. If you have any questions that we haven't answered, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell when we post new videos, and we'll see you on the next one.